everyone welcome to the first of what I hope is to be many videos showcasing my love of all things Transformers specifically the toys all the way back from the 80s until now I thought I'd start however with a more recent Transformer toy from the legacy evolution line the evil eloquent and zealously devoted leader of the Decepticon Justice Division Tarn I wanted to start with him because firstly I think he's an awesome character that originally appeared in a big way in the IDW Transformers comics continuity more than meets the eye and I love the idea of a Decepticon team of warp justice slash police department agents that chase down rogue Decepticons and traitors to the cause and by the way I'll get more into my version of his team at the end of this video. I also totally love his iconic look with that Decepticon symbol used as his menacing faceplate and his dark and regal purple color scheme for both his robot and tank forms. And then finally, I wanted to start with him because as you'll see towards the end of this video, I'll be taking these toys I review and creating my own bit of toy fan fiction that I think will be a fun and unique way to end my videos and hopefully spark some of your imagination. So with that, let's get on with a bit of a review of the toy itself. First off, we'll take a look at his robot form. While he may not be the bulkiest of toys for what I would consider a higher up figure in the echelons of the Decepticon leadership, he does in my opinion reflect the comic book version really well. Specifically, I think the design has perfectly captured all the main key aspects of comic book Tarn's armor, from his Decepticon logo face and triple tank tread shoulders, all the way down to his jagged gold plated kneecaps and clawed feet. Even his arm cannons with their non-identical double barrels obviously attribute to his leader Megatron to his lasers which protrude upward off his back captures the comic version fairly accurately. Speaking of his fusion cannons, I like that the designers added some dark red see-through plastic to highlight certain portions of the weapon. It's a nice touch, can even unofficially light up when near a light source. While the chest isn't exactly what's drawn in the comic, we still have to keep in mind that this is a toy and therefore has to take some aesthetic liberties in order to make the overall toy work in both forms. And to be honest, the chest still looks great and serves really well as the front of the tank. And you also see that in some of the images, his clawed hands are open, which is an excellent addition that is accurate to the character's personality and overall look. I also want to point out how cool it is that his laser combines and attaches in different ways which significantly increases his playability and the ways you can display him. And now onto his Cybertronian tank mode. While again I think his comic book version is a bit more bulky, I kind of dig the sleek tank form of the toy. I'll get the one drawback right out of the way first, and it really isn't so much of a criticism of the toy as something I wish Hasbro would incorporate into the tank transformers, including Megatron, and that's real working treads. Combiner Wars Megatron had moving treads, which I thought was incredible, even if you weren't planning on playing with it. I have to say though that Hasbro did make the treads look great on the Tarn toy, including the nice aggressive detailing. Plus, given Tarn's look and transformation and that he isn't a typical Earth mode tank, I don't think it would have actually even been possible. Other than that, the tank is really fun, looks menacing, and has some real nice firepower to make Tarn a formidable foe on the battlefield. It's also nice to have a tank mode that works with some of the other more exotic tank versions of this toy line, specifically Megatron and Blitzwing. Obviously a bit smaller as I mentioned earlier, but it does make up for it in its very cool and highly effective and maneuverable looking design. So now I'm going to show you how I prefer to transform Tarn step by step. And the first thing we're going to do is turn him around and take off his cannons, which come off fairly easily. We can just leave it to the side for now. We'll also untab and pull back the backpack which houses the lasers and leave it floating for now. Moving back to the front, we'll continue with the transformation of his upper body. We're going to slightly lift up his chest armor which is tabbed in until it stops and not force it all the way up. And then we'll take his head next and flip it around and push it back until it slots right into the space under the chest armor, like this. So 
So now we're ready to move to the arm section. In order to be able to manipulate his arms, we'll next have to pull out the shoulder tank treads ever so slightly. So you can see here that there's only a small amount of movement needed. Then we're going to take his, what I like to call, lower arm guards and turn them back 180 degrees. And we'll do that for each arm. Once we've made sure there's some space in the back, we can rotate the arms back a full 180 degrees while also lifting up the chest armor to its final upward position. So here I've done it halfway, now all the way back up. And just turn them to that 180 degree position. This next part I originally found a bit tricky. So I'll show you how I manage the transformation of the arms into the tank treads. First thing is to make a bit of space by flipping the backpack around. Next we'll pull down the middle and back part of the treads, which are still tapped together 90 degrees, and unhinge a part of the final section of the tank treads for each arm. The lower arms can now be brought back up parallel to the front part of the treads. You can see that it's it's really starting to take shape now and looks a lot more compact so that it can form the base of his Cybertronian tank mode. The bottom third part of the treads should now be tabbed out of the middle tread section and clicked into place. Finally, the arm should be rotated until the arm guards are facing us and then bent down at the hinge section to click into place and then close the flap uh, from earlier into place. Do that obviously for both arms. At this point we're pretty much done and we've uh, almost reached the easiest part of the transformation in my opinion. So you can now lower the feet down at this point and tab into place the backpack section which, which houses the lasers. There are tabs here that will connect tightly with the main body. Um, and then take each of the arms and lift them up slightly to then rotate them 180 degrees into place just like this. Finally, we can lift up the legs, which will tap right into the backpack laser section. Make sure here that you not only fold them in, but also push them up so you can see this gray hinge positioned on a small outward angle and we'll do that for both legs. You can connect the legs to each other at this point or before you fold them it's up to you. Last step, simply tab the tank treads into the folded legs. There are small tabs for this on the original lower arm guards which are now over the tank tread section. You can see it right here. And then I like to uh, turn the fists in so that it doesn't look like actual hands sticking up in tank mode. And there you have it, the evil Tarn fully transformed. And don't forget to add back the cannons which have um, two tabs underneath the cannon mounting section that easily line up with the slots of the folded legs. All right, so now we're at the fun part, building out the Decepticon Justice Division with some other Transformer toys we have that I think look great together and kind of make sense. Included in this team build out, I put Barricade in his Cybertronian mode from the Siege War for Cybertron line as well as G2 Ramjet from the Generation Selects line. While it would be nice to have some figures of the actual comic book versions of the rest of the DJD in the current Transformers line, I do like having Barricade part of this team given he is essentially a Decepticon cop and part of Megatron's defense force. 
I added in Ramjet because it makes sense to have a seeker and flying member of the DJD when hunting down enemies of the Decepticon state, and his color scheme really matches up well with the other two figures. In the end, what we have is a seeker for the skies and a heavy artillery tank and fast moving police car for the ground. In my opinion, this makes for a nice looking display as well as a storyline that can be expanded on. Of course, we can't end without showing Tarn doing his thing and hunting down rogue Decepticons with the DJD, so I included a few shots of Tarn chasing down poor Spinister, also from the siege line, and using his outlier ability to whisper into his digital receiver to make him self-destruct. So that's it for me. Now I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment section. Suggestions on what you'd like to see, including team builds and backstories, things in the video that you enjoyed, really anything to help make this a fun channel to visit and discuss. It would even be great to hear about ideas you have for team combinations and stories and to share them with others on the channel. If you enjoyed this channel, please subscribe and like. And remember, it's all just such heroic nonsense in the end. Until next time. Transform!